Hello, dear friends. We will look today at the diary of Lieutenant Brand, an officer of the Wehrmacht. His diary goes from June 28, 1943, the year he considers the darkest year in all German history. So now let us begin. September 12th. A period of rains has started very early, and it could cause the whole Southern Army to disaster. The 62nd Division is completely defeated. We come across the remnants of it. Our southeastern flank is almost totally bare. Possibly the road to Nepropetrovsk is cut off for us in a few days. My hope is that our division will successfully overcome all of this. Somehow, there will be more than enough losses anyway. September 16th On the 13th, we pulled out in the afternoon. We passed through Novomoskovsk in deep mud and slush, and in late afternoon, we reached Nepropetrovsk and stopped there in the western outskirts of the city. I crossed the Dnieper again on the 14th morning and took the second column for Nikolevsk. In the morning of the 15th, we detoured to our new location, around 100 kilometers to the west of Nepropetrovsk. Since last night, we were accommodated in a small location called Alfarovo. The road was at times very interesting. In Novomoskovsk, I observed a beautiful nine-headed cathedral in red and blue. In the afternoon and evening of the 14th, I visited Nepropetrovsk and had a chance to see the city. A lot of the houses are built nearly in the classical style of the Wilhelm period, as was common in imperial times. The Bolsheviks also built much, too. Here is some great buildings and many new villages, very beautiful ones even. Columns of refugees, cattle, and horses crowded all over the roads. This time, the retreat of the wagons was far more organized. All the same, many wagons were destroyed, not all of the wagons we gathered here. September 22nd there is still a retreat on all fronts, and there will be no great change in Italy after Mussolini's rescue. Now he is a dead man anyway. The song of the Savoy House is finally sung. It can only be a matter of trying to save all that could still be saved for the empire for us. Our general position due to the fall of Italy has become much worse, but gradually I become apathetic to the destiny of Germany as well. I read Hitler's speeches of 1940 to 1941 last night. It shocked me and sobered me at the same time. No book, perhaps, is so quickly out of date, and which with such force witnesses against its author. This man is not a prophet and also perhaps a very mediocre politician, but this is hard to accept after having adored him for years, and even more hard to change my mind in the fifth year of the war. Wherever you look, there is no ray of light for us. It is important for us now only to stand back and take the advantage of changing relationships between the great nations. My mind tells me that our chances are very small, while my sense tells me that Germany cannot be destroyed. It will not be the way we had hoped and wished for. Our division's retreat here in the South more and more assumes for men, cattle, and vehicles the character of a catastrophe, although it occurs in an exemplary order. During retreats, though, this is a usual thing. September 27th. On the 24th, I was with the mechanized supply wagon at Nepropetrovsk, which was being evacuated. That was a lot of heartbreak. Massive blast operations. Disbandment of the supply wagon returning to the regiment. The 3rd Battalion is disbanded. Supply shortages. It is said to be so in each regiment. The bad signs are increasing. The supply and rear units are growing. Yesterday, I came across a regimental supply wagon that numbered at least 950 men. The colonel must be arrested. After all, we do not have so many men in our whole regiment, and they are all dragging women and stuff with them. Poor Germany. This is worse than in 1914 to 1918 in so many ways. While our combat strength is gone, the Russians get more and more powerful day by day. Just today, the general sentenced to a field trial nine men of our battalion who were running away like cowards. They were running away from the Russians. Here we are in the fifth year of the war. Who would ever dare blame them at the sight of all this misery and suffering? A deep sense of pity for each and every soldier overwhelms me. Yes, there also seems to be pity for every Russian old woman who is forced to abandon her home now. A miserable world. A miserable humanity gone to ruin all humanity. A poor homeland having to endure such terrible things. We must stand it. There is no right for us to let ourselves lose, and we must stay firm, or else the dam will break and the terrible thing will begin. The Russians have seized the fortification before the bridge on our side of the Dnieper since yesterday. 
They have been beating back our strong counterattacks for two days now, causing us heavy damage. Only we hear about the dead and wounded. They are still using a huge number of heavy guns and aircraft, but they must be finally pushed back tomorrow morning, despite all odds. We will hope so. September 28th. Cruel bombardments. Dreams are not to be thought of. The Russian artillery is very powerful and crushes everything. Our attacks are getting suffocated, as the Russians from the opposite side of the river cover every single soldier with strong fire. There is great disagreement between the colonel and the general. The tank attacks and diving bombers are not helping a lot either. The infantry is badly damaged by heavy losses. Not much is left of the 1st Battalion. There is a pretty big mess. The counterattacks are delayed from one hour to another or suffocated. No more than 200 or 400 Russians on this shore based on all estimates. But if only they did not have so much gunnery and aircraft. The Russians shoot like mad. There is a growing mass of dead and wounded. So I write the last few words and go to the positions. Not many of them I will find there. The battalion has run out. We have finally hit a dead end. The homeland bleeds out a thousand wounds. The leadership of mediocrities seems to have taken over everywhere. Under the greatest need, Germany calls out her last sons. But the majority does not wish to follow this call. But now, we have to do what we possibly can, though it is getting harder and harder to do our duty. There are mountains between us and our homeland. A lot of people are struggling to get around it. The life beckons, and the home beckons, and nobody dies willingly or easily. And yet we continue on the difficult path of our duty. It is not easy indeed. After all, I also love life passionately. We are Germans, and we want to live. And if it is necessary, we will die as Germans. Together, we will try to assault those high mountains and keep us far away from our homeland and families. There are more and more explosions of shells, and I am going to the front line. May Germany live! And I know that I will live forever. September 29th A nice evening and a black night. I took the first company. It only had a few men in it. In the entire battalion, there were 26 soldiers left. A heavy Russian gunfire lasts for hours. Each house is on fire. Each corner is penetrated deep through. Our offensive was held up. With the few men we have, it is a real slaughter. No one could do anything. A very heavy loss. This morning, we got an order to move the whole supply wagon to one location, search it out, and gather all the men who had straggled out. The participation of the battalion in the fighting was absolutely impossible. It has only two or three squads, led by three officers. The afternoon, there was terrible screaming. A break through the front, the retreat of all troops, and, finally, a mad flee. I was standing in a small village and unsuccessfully tried to stem the fleeing units. A scary scene of collapse. I had to kick one young officer in his butt. There was no success. With threats and such, I managed to gather at most ten men. Eventually, I retreated with our groomsmen to the height and arranged for a defense. What a dark day! October 1st We managed, after hard losses, eventually to get away from the Russians. Our pathetic remnants are now the regimental reserve. The new divisions are thrown into the battle. The Germans' progress is miserable. Lieutenant Jan was missing. Captain Strum has lost both his legs. And Rydal was murdered during a counterattack. I can write no more. I loved him more than anyone else. He was so young and he had to die so early. Unhappy Germany, whose youth is being taken away from it. Unhappy homeland. October 3rd. I am in charge of the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd companies. The three companies are actually a bunch, with no more than 30 men. The truth is, they promise us a reinforcement today or tomorrow, but it would probably take us some more time to get to know them, and I hope they will not throw the new guys into battle immediately. The German counteroffensive progresses little by little. It will be another few days, at least, before the fortification, before the bridge is removed. Captain Zontag is dead. No luck for our 2nd Battalion as well. There were two wins in our company from Alsace, who evidently became deserters and who are now contacting us on the radio. A former officer's batman also sends his wife and children his regards. Nothing is the same for our nation as it used to be. The enthusiasm and the impulse shift to the side of the Russians. October 6th The reinforcements came at last yesterday, and I formed a whole new 1st Company. There are 35 of us by now including one officer and one non-commissioned officer. 
Most of them are older, mainly workers and peasants. My hope is that everything will be all right. We worked diligently yesterday on training them to handle weapons. Most of them, regretfully, are not yet used to the new MG-42 machine gun. A correspondence with relatives of the dead. It is surprising how many of them are quickly reassured. The wives, in three letters, ask for the pen knives or shaving kits of the dead to be sent to them. This is all for today. Please support this video with a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed it. Goodbye, and see you all soon.